All right, guys, I have some great news. Twitter and YouTube are once again really cracking down on human rights violations known as disinformation. Or maybe it's misinformation. Miss or... I guess they're interchangeable. I'm not exactly sure if there is a difference. But the dangers of ideas spreading freely is clearly a threat to any type of democracy. So thankfully, Twitter and YouTube, they're stepping up to the plate here. <laughs> they're, they're doing the Lord's work. They're doing what needs to be done. <laughs> so let's check this out. When election season hits, Twitter's where you come to see what's happening and have your voice heard. We encourage these important conversations, and we work to make sure they're helpful, not harmful. We have clear guidelines for false or misleading claims. Which is just great. I mean, could you imagine what the world would be like if, uh, <laughs> if Twitter wasn't policing your speech? Related to elections and voting. If a false or misleading tweet could result in voter suppression or intimidation, or diminish public confidence in elections, or label... <laughs> Diminish public confidence in life. If anyone actually has an opinion we don't like, no, no, no. Or remove it. We also limit the spread of inaccurate tweets by preventing likes, retweets, and comments. How come whenever anyone brings up the fact that they do this, where they limit reach, shadow ban, you know, they, they generally just suppress things, they say, that's crazy. We don't do that. <laughs> and then they make videos like this where they say, no, we do limit the spread of inaccurate tweets. Well, who decides that? Well, we do. So then you just basically shadow ban anyone you want. No, that's, that's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, trust the experts. We want you to stay informed and vote with confidence. So we curate the latest election news and updates into Twitter moments. Label candidate accounts so you know who's running. Pin relevant tweets to help explain what's trending. And gather election information and resources local to you in the handy elections hub. We'll work to preserve oh, the integrity yeah. of election conversations on Twitter so you can stay informed and feel empowered to participate in elections. This is just ridiculously dystopian. I just don't understand this. <laughs> we know that they work with the, the different federal government agencies and they're just like, we're going to make sure that your conversations stay on track. All right. We're going to make sure that nothing that is, is inaccurate or, or potentially harmful gets to you. Don't worry. We'll filter it for you. It's not a big deal. This is totally fine. It's a, uh, it's, it's not a problem. We, We'll take care of it. No worries. No, no need to think too much about it. Okay? It's totally fine. Please visit elections.twitter.com for more information about our approach to elections conversations. Oh, yeah. No, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to elections.twitter.com <laughs> and see what they have to say. I'm, I'm sure there's, there's it's, it's, it's on the up and up. They, they've never done anything that could possibly be considered, I don't know, censorship. I mean, that, that's totally never happened. But at the same time, and this is totally strange. Why is this happening? Why, why is this suddenly a thing where, you know, it's, it's almost like they're revving up for something. Like, you know, there, there's something that's going on and maybe they think that it might not go their way. And so, uh, listen, they're going to be cracking down. <laughs> they are going to be cracking down on this. But, uh, you know, of course, don't worry. YouTube is on it as well. They've got this whole new ad campaign that's here to just tell us they're taking care of it. In the art style, fantastic. Whoa. Before you fall for emotional language, oh, hit pause. And check your emotions in case they're being manipulated. <laughs> this is my new jam, dude. Yeah. Before you assume a story's true, hit pause and check more sources to make sure the facts you're getting aren't one-sided. Gotta check with the experts, man. The experts know. All right? The experts know. Before you're forced into making a choice, 
hit pause and ask yourself if there are more options to choose from. <laughs> and I love how this whole thing, the, the way they set all this up is, is they're, they're just acting as if, no, we are the ones that are looking out for you. No, it's, it, there's, there's bad actors out there that are trying to influence you. We have your back. And the way we have your back is we're not going to allow you to see all of the opinions. That's how you know we're on your side. <laughs> we won't allow you to see anything that could possibly be uh, dangerous to our democracy. <laughs> Before you trust an expert online, hit pause and check their credentials. And I love this new thing where they're trying to act as if, no, we're the ones, we were never the ones that were telling you to just believe the experts blindly. There's some, someone else, they're, they're claiming to be experts. We know who the real experts are. Don't just trust experts blindly. Make sure they're our experts. <laughs> and how do you know they're experts? Well, we'll tell you. It's, it's pretty easy. You don't even have to think about it, dude. Does YouTube remove all misinformation? We remove content that violates our misinformation policies. But in order to do that, we need a clear set of facts to base our policies on. But often, oh, misinformation wow, yeah. isn't that clear cut. It's constantly evolving, and there isn't always expert consensus. And that... <laughs> They keep updating their arguments, and we find it hard to keep up with them. And, uh, you know, we just have to try to censor them as much as we can. <laughs> YouTube, we believe in openness. We want diverse voices and a broad range of perspectives to flourish, including when there's disagreement and debate. So where Oh, yeah, and the way that we make that happen is by removing the people that we don't like. That's how we ensure just good, healthy debate. How does that leave us with potential misinformation? Do we just leave it up if we don't have all the facts? That's a good question, Anjali. So we refer to Great content question, that comes Anjali. close to, but doesn't quite cross the line of violating our guidelines as borderline content. And oh, hey, that's me. He's talking about me. <laughs> borderline content could be things like wild speculations about recent events or long-standing conspiracy theories that say things like the moon landing was fake. And obviously we have great <laughs> videos on YouTube that- I, I love that stuff where they're like, no, we're, we, first of all, why even go after that? Why, why, why do you care? I love watching those videos. I'm a proof that the moon landing was faked. But what is this weird thing where they're trying to clear, they do this all the time where they're conflating wild conspiracy theories, as he calls them with what they're actually doing because they feel like people would agree with that which i don't even agree with but they feel like people would agree with that but really what they're doing is saying yeah i think there was some funny business in the 2020 election oh no crazy or you know I, guys i'm starting to think that maybe like the deep state might actually be a real thing oh it's, it's crazy or yeah, I'm, I'm starting to think here that maybe the federal government like they don't really have our best interests at heart. Oh, well, that is some wild conspiracies right there, buddy. <laughs> Explain that moon landing actually happened. In 2019, we started demoting borderline content in recommendations, resulting in a 70% drop in watch time on non-subscribed recommended borderline content in the U.S. that year. We saw I love this. It's the same thing that Twitter does when confronted with this where so they go well you guys just block things that you don't like and they go no no we don't and then they put out this video where they brag about the fact that well we took borderline content and we reduced its viewership by like 90 percent and they brag about it <laughs> this is starting to feel like all of those videos i've done about the the, the transgender kids thing where they go no we don't transition children what no i'm referencing your video that you where you said exactly that no we took that video down <laughs> no we do it we just think that we only deserve praise we don't we, sh we don't deserve ridicule for it we just deserve praise <laughs> 
No, we don't throttle your channel. Totally not. We would never, we'd never dream of it. But channels that we don't like, we reduced their reach by 90% last year. <laughs> saw a drop in watch time of borderline content coming from recommendations in other countries as well. So the next question is, how do we decide what's borderline? And that can be really tricky. And that's why we rely on external evaluators located around the world to uh, provide critical input on the quality of a video. And what You see? See, it all goes back to the experts. They rely on the experts, man. It's the experts that they pick, not the other experts. They had that, you know, cute little cartoon video about that not the other experts our experts what they're looking at is whether the content is inaccurate misleading or deceptive if it's insensitive or intolerant or whether it's harmful or has the potential to cause harm among other things the guideline that all means nothing my dude <laughs> none of that means anything every single one of those things requires further explanation Therefore, what you just said means nothing. It's not a guideline. Don't write it down. <laughs> because they, they say that, well, these st this stuff is clearly outlined. You can go look at it. Believe me, I've read it. And God, it's painful to get through. But the, it, th th that's nothing. That's the, the <laughs> you might as well just say, listen, we just take down things we don't like. At least if you did that, I'd have some respect for you. <laughs> and these evaluators use are public. You can read them for yourselves. And each review might include up to nine different evaluators. Some important wow. areas require certified experts. For example, licensed medical doctors will provide guidance for videos about health treatments to help us limit the spread of medical misinformation. We then yeah, use really the results important. from these reviews to score how likely it is that the video contains harmful misinformation. And any video that's classified as borderline is not proactively recommended on YouTube unless you are subscribed to that channel. Our machines learn- <sighs> I love this. They, they've been swearing up and down that this isn't happening <laughs> for like years. <laughs> they've even been taken to court over this and they still say, no, we don't do that. <laughs> And now this video that they posted on September 9th, just this month is saying, yeah, all those things. No, we totally do that. But it's a good thing that we do that because each, each time we, we, we talk to like at least nine experts and their expert opinions expertly help us dictate what expertly needs to be shadow banned because that's what experts are there for. I mean, how else would you know which things should expertly not be allowed to be seen? I mean, this, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just common sense. Learn from this, and they model those reviews performed by people, so we can apply this approach at scale to similar videos on YouTube. And we've been able to use these models to help us review hundreds of thousands of hours of videos every day to find and limit the spread of borderline content. But wow. we're not done here, and we'll continue to work very hard to continue to improve these systems. For more information about what we're doing to create a responsible platform for our community, visit the How YouTube Works website. Well, you know, I'm still waiting to find out exactly what's going on with my four videos that I have that have been under review for two weeks. <laughs> and this was basically them just telling me that, by the way, while this is happening, since, you know, we're reducing your reach by 90%. So thanks for that. <laughs> totally appreciate that. That's fantastic. <laughs> but we do encourage, as they said, we do encourage debate. We, we do uh, encourage questioning and other opinions. The thing is, if they're the wrong ones, we'll make sure that no one hears it. And essentially, if you could, you know, just really you know for, for for the health of the nation our democracy if you could just you know swamp if you could just think about you know just kindly off that'd be great <laughs>